Once upon a time, in a land called reality, there was a young and handsome knight who traveled over hill and dale in search of life's treasures. One day it was his fortune to happen upon a great cavern while in the midst of his endeavors. And there in the heart of the mountains, his eyes caught the glance of a fair young maiden. So it was that this brief exchange led to a great flow of heartfelt thoughts and words, both spoken and written, and to a charming courtship. It blossomed into a beautiful and promising marriage. The years were kind to the handsome knight and his beloved. They were blessed by the birth of two fair children, one boy and one girl, whom they chose to call their little prince and princess. For by now, the knight had advanced in the ranks of the land called reality to the point where he had earned his family a holiday. The seventh anniversary of their wedding found the knight, his beloved, and their little prince and princess traveling over hill and dale in search of adventure. Almost by chance, they happened upon a great cavern. Indeed, the very same cavern where the knight had met his wife as a fair maiden many years before. Whether by accident or fateful coincidence, this return to the scene of their meeting cast a spell on the couple that may have blinded them to the passing of time. For while they reenacted their tender moments of years ago, the prince and princess fell under another spell that of the wonderful and mysterious caverns. Once inside, the children found themselves in another world. It was a world not limited by space or time, not encumbered by prosaic things. Their little feet carried them on sandy paths, winding into their dreams. It was easy to mix up their young senses of time and space as they walked, skipped, and ran through the cave land of spectacles. It happened when Pat stopped to empty sand from her shoe. Marty thought he heard a voice, a deep voice from high above saying, I never get sand in my shoes. But who do you think you are? I'm the old man of the mountain, that's who. And I never get sand in my shoes. But you don't have any legs. You don't have any feet. You don't have any shoes. That's to prevent me from stumbling from this precarious perch. Rather intelligent of me. Where are you headed? That way. Ah, a very good way. A few steps brought the children to a cool pool. I heard fish. What does a fish sound like? A fish sounds like me. I am a fish, more accurately described as a brook trout, Salvelinus fontanalis. You are beauty. Thank you. And I'm happy, too, because nobody ever tries to catch me and my friends. I live in a world free of hooks and rods. Well, Pat and Marty had already made two friends, and they'd been in the caverns for only a... Oh, well, it didn't matter. The important thing right now was to treat their stuffed dog, Rusty, to a good burying in the sand, just like at the beach. 
You do that rather well, a voice seemed to say, from an unusual formation behind them. Thank you, mister. Mister. Um. Hound Dog is the name. I'd like you to bury me in the sand, too, but my work doesn't permit frivolity. What do you do? I'm the watchdog of the caverns. I also smell eggs. You smell eggs? Yes, don't you? And bacon and honey. Somewhere in these caverns, I detect bacon, eggs, and honey. Please find them for me. Well, the children set out on their vital task with all the dedication that their years of experience had taught them. They hiked along Rainbow Trail. In the middle of darkness, they saw a breathtaking cluster of colors, and over it flowed a sparkling waterfall. Stand there. We can't. We have to find the bacon and eggs and the honey for Mr. Hound Dog. Now their mission beckoned the prince and princess to Mirror Lake, another body of water that, like the others, comes from a place no one knows and goes to a place no one knows. It, it looks like a rainbow. The painted desert spoke to the children by its delicate colors and unworldly formations. It was the grotto that caused Pat and Marty to sit down to think. Perhaps it was the beautiful statuesque form that resembled a Madonna. Or maybe it was the sparkle of the water in the grotto. A considerable amount of skill was involved in turning one's breath to vapor, but Pat and Marty mastered the art. And suddenly, the children realized they had lost track of time. Was it day or night? Was it today, tomorrow, or yesterday? Everything seemed so very special, it just didn't matter. Let's, let's climb up here and see what we can see. They saw a fantasy of flowing stone draped like the softest velvet. They stepped into a cathedral formed of travertine and flowstone. Wide canyons carried them from unknown to unknown, from mystery to mystery. And then, quite unexpectedly, who dares to enter the domain of Sir Alligator? And sure enough, there was a great dragon head just above the children. Marty wasn't at all afraid. I hope you're good children, because I love good children. Delicious. Nearby, there seemed to hang great calcite leaves, like leaves of Virginia tobacco. And there among them seemed to be a goblin face. Pat, too, showed her fearlessness. And still, uh, one should be careful, so it didn't hurt to run a bit. Especially to church. The shrine was like a little church to the prince and princess. And suddenly, they missed their mother and father. Like most children, these two weren't saddened for long not among these treasures of brilliant stones. Flowers! Flowers on a tree! 
Pat and Marty had come upon the magnificent anthodites, the rare and exotic cave flowers. It would take 20,000 years to replace us, a voice spoke up. Or did it? Did you say that? No, I did, up here. We'd be proud to become your mother's bouquet, but... 20,000 years? I think we'd just tell Mom and Dad about you. From cavern room to room, the children toddled to see entire fields of anthodites growing from the roof. Their delicate stone petals reached out in every known direction, and several unknown ones as well. One hole in the wall tempted Marty to check it out. It was just the right size for getting stuck. Soon the prince and princess found themselves in a maze, a delightful crawling place. The standard means of transportation in the maze are hands and knees. And Pat and Marty were tried and true experts. I suppose Mr. Hound Dog sent you. There before them was the funny face of a monkey looking right at them. He always wants to eat my breakfast. Do you have his breakfast? It's not his, it's mine. I sit on that green moss over there and eat my fill of honey from that honeycomb. And bacon from over there. And eggs from over there. Well, it was just too much for Marty. He had to sample that breakfast. Now that the children had found the food Mr. Hound Dog asked them to look for, there was the matter of relocating Mr. Hound Dog. And so they sat down to plot their course. The only trouble was, they were completely lost. They didn't see a figure in the shadows, watching, walking silently toward them. Where have you been? We've been waiting right here for you. The old man of the mountain, the big trout, Mr. Hound Dog, Sir Alligator, the Anthodites, Monkey Face, Pat and Marty told their parents about all the friends they had met. Their mother was pleased that they had made such nice friends. She, too, had met someone very nice there seven years before. Where does a child's imagination begin? And the land of reality end? It's difficult to tell, especially when you're under the spell of the caverns. <laughs> 